I'm Jill Gilbert, and for today's Community Spotlight, we have Katie Gachins from the Southwest Community Health Clinic. Thank you so much for having us today, Katie. Hi, Jill. Thanks for coming. We're really glad that you're interested in our clinic and would like to show you around and show you what we do. Sounds great. Well, let's go. <laughs> Well, we opened for business in May of 2005, but the clinic really began being became a vision in 2000. Um, our current executive director, Samira Godil, was working as a health coordinator for the Head Start program. She was finding it difficult to find health care for the children in the program because many of them simply had no access. And what they found was that not just the Head Start children, but their parents and their siblings and their aunts and their uncles all came to try to take advantage of the free clinic that was being offered. So they began doing some research and formed a board, basically with Samira driving it. And by 2005, they had enlisted enough support and enough materials to open the clinic. The goal is to provide health care to people who otherwise would not have access. And in some cases, uh, some clinics are serving people who are underinsured, who have insurance but not enough to cover what they're trying to do or they've maxed their benefits out or, you know, other issues. Ineligible for Medicaid, generally speaking, some because they're working, some because of other reasons. Um, they have no other health care insurance or access to it. I believe a majority of the patients, but a number of them at any rate, are working and simply don't have employer coverage and don't make enough to purchase health care. Mm. I was fully employed with a very reputable company. I had a, a lot of tenure. I was uh, in management. I, I came out of that, uh, became unemployed, and decided to start my own business. And it was, it's was it been quite a struggle. And uh, I know health insurance is important, but unfortunately I had to make some choices that caused me to drop my insurance. And uh, I know I took a gamble, but uh, in the interim as I transitioned, uh, this clinic has been absolutely um, a great temporary fill for me. And it's, uh, it's really helped me. So, and I, I want to emphasize temporary because I think a lot of people go through issues through life and uh, need help temporarily and you got to grab on and, and get some help and get your feet back on the ground. and and then and pass it on. I think that we are have diverted a number of people from what would otherwise be emergency room service by catching them earlier in the progression of their illnesses and being able to treat it out, on an outpatient basis. I came here and I, I described some symptoms that I was concerned about and the doctor talked to me, thought, you know, I guess a flag went up, she said, well, we better run a blood test on you and, uh, and they found out I was diabetic. Uh, type 2 just came on within the last couple of years. I'm very grateful they caught my di diabetes when they did. Uh, the consequences of diabetes can be deadly, and uh, we caught it in time with minimal damage, and I'm doing quite well now. Do they give you a, a program to follow? or? Well, yeah, they did, and they also referred me to the Internet. Uh, the diabetes uh, webpage has a lot of information. Um, basically, it's diet, exercise, and just trying to control how foods affect your, your blood sugars. And you want you know, foods that are going to react slowly and, and uh, not spike your blood up and down. So. We have physicians from the OHSU Department of Family Medicine, and we also have physicians from Legacy Internal Medicine. But we also have um, medical students who volunteer and serve as medical assistants. We have some nurses in the community who have volunteered for records and coding kinds of work, and many other lay people who answer phone calls, do intake, bring meals for the volunteers, really help out in a variety of other ways. So we have about 150 active volunteers. We've, we've served over 3,000, we've had over 3,000 patient visits since opening, and we've had several hundred referrals that we've made either for advanced imaging for certain conditions or to specialists in the community. And mostly they are found by diligence on the part of the staff, people who are able to and willing to accept the patients. Mm -hmm. One thing that's kind of a little, little bit odd, I had it used to, is they'll have a doctor with students and you have a bit of a crowd in, in the office with you, but uh, it's for the benefit of the students learning and uh, it's, a, it's a good experience all the way around. We, we opened as an acute care facility program and so we get um, oh, 
strep throats and bladder infections and conjunctivitis and those kinds of acute care things where we can treat somebody once and send them on their way or have them come back once. Um, but we're also we've also had a lot of people come in with diabetes that was not well in control, um, asthma, asthmatic conditions, um, blood pressure, and people who need continuing monitoring as well. We're catching people who would fall through the cracks. Yeah, I think safety net is the it's it's both the technical term and and a real term. I think in this case, there is no question but that more effective preventive care would go a long way to helping address the healthcare crisis in this country. Many 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 illnesses that people are coming up with now are avoidable, and good preventive care could avoid or catch many of these things before they become as debilitating and um, expensive as they become. So I, I agree with that step entirely. What are the primary challenges you face currently? Probably two tracks. One thing that we're realizing as we work is that we have a lot of patients presenting with mental health issues who need more care than we can provide. Um, we can do medication management and that's about it. We can't do the service or counseling services that would be a part of good care. So, you know, that's one direction. But the other sort of immediate clear-cut problem is space. We could see more people now, even in the hours we're open, if we had more space, even with current staffing, simply because we have traffic flow problems, moving people from room to room and, you know, having them ready for the doctors to, to um, work with when, they, when they're free from the patient before. So... That would help enormously. We, we would like to be able to have both more space and expand our hours so that we could add some more daytime hours. And, uh, you know, our hope would be to be open every day. It's easy to say it's an access problem. The reality is that few people without insurance at this time can afford it. So it's got to be a balance. If, if what needs to be increased is access, it has to be accessible without insurance or else it's an insurance problem affordable health care coverage for everyone is the greatest need. I think that we're helping by, we've had, you know, we have had over 3,000 patient visits and that's 3,000 visits for people who needed health care who have gotten some assistance. It's obviously a minuscule amount of what's needed even here in the Portland area, let alone in the state or the country. I should say first that almost all of the equipment and the furniture and um, materials that we used originally were donated um, so that we've, you know, kept it down the manufacturing end of things. Sustainable funding for operations. We find that donors are happy to do expensive single item things. Um, we could probably run a capital campaign and get a place equipped as a medical facility, but then we would have to pay the mortgage or the um, rent if we were to do that. Salaries are harder to justify um, so I think having a sustainable funding stream that could be applied to salaries and ongoing expenses would probably ease the burden greatly. The reason I uh, chose to get more involved in this clinic, um, I was going to offer to do computer work for them and stuff like that, but that's already covered, but I wanted to give back. Um, I think when people uh, are given opportunities to receive, uh, you need to also look for ways to give back, and uh, that's what I'm trying to do. But I think the biggest contribution is that, that by being able, having access to a clinic, clinic like this when people need it as an outpatient, that we're helping people stay in the workforce and avoiding the costly emergency room visits, which is what most of our population would be forced to use in order to obtain medical care without a clinic like this. My only other wish is that there were either many more safety net clinics to serve the needs of people all over the city um, because there are pockets everywhere that need this help um, or that we will find a way as a society to address health care needs more effectively. Well, I want to thank you, Katie, for having us here at the clinic. You're very welcome. I'm glad you could come. And I wanted to thank you, Michael, for letting us sit in on your exam. My pleasure. You're very welcome. And my name is Jill Gilbert, bringing you the tools to be more sustainable today.